He's, he's young. A, he's huge, mate. He's big for biggest eighteen year old I've ever seen. So Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty a, huge. From the ups and downs of the team to starting a family, Chad Townsend from the Cronulla Sharks sits with us to talk about life beyond the stadium and the future of the team. Chad, big fella, how's it going? Yeah, good. Good. Thank, Mate, thanks for having us. You grew up here, yeah? Yeah, I grew up in Yawara. Yeah. Uh, went to Yawara Primary School and then yeah. went to Ingerdean High School. Ingerdean High, okay. So I, I was a DLA boy growing up. There was always a bit of a, you know, a bit of a riff there, but we can put that to the side. <laughs> and junior footy, how was that? Where, where'd you play? Yeah, I played for Yawara Tigers. I uh, started playing when I was five years old. A friend of mine at primary school uh, asked me if I would come down to training and give it a go, and I uh, pretty much fell in love with the game then and have loved it ever since. A lot of uh, my good friends played uh, when I was pretty young, and we're also we're all still really good mates now. Yeah. So um, a lot of my friendships and a lot of my life I do owe to rugby league. You know, I got married uh, two years ago now, and uh, all my groomsmen I played footy with when I was about six years old. Yeah, so um, you know, that's really special. And what, what what are some accolades you got through the junior footy? Is there any things we should be? <laughs> uh, I'll probably you know. I never thought I was the best player growing yeah. up. Uh, I just I absolutely love the game, yeah. and I loved you know what it brought to my life. Um, yeah. I was in a pretty successful junior team, and we were able to win uh, seven competitions for Yawara, which was Is that which, it? Yeah, <laughs> which was pretty fun, and we had a really good team. And like I said before, you know that formed a lot of friendships, which I still hold close to today. Growing up around the Shire, what, what, what were you like growing up? Yeah, I think I was uh, a pretty normal kid. Obviously, living in Yawara, uh, there's quite a bit, of, fair bit of bush around. So, yeah. you know, my friends and I would would come home from school and we'd sort of meet up and either on our bikes or on our scooters outdoor and outdoors yeah. and uh, either building jumps or cubby houses or you know just being active. I was yeah. I was pretty active. I never really liked playing PlayStation or being inside. Yeah, uh, I love being outdoors and and outside with my friends. Now you've got a vlog, which I don't think a lot of the footy players really have. But uh, just break that down for me. And do you have time for this? Because you're a busy man. Yeah, it's uh, something I started probably 12 months ago. And What's it called? It doesn't oh, have a it's name? just just you. It's just yeah, Chad CT Vlogs. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. um, I started about. 12 months ago and uh, I follow this guy online on social media called Gary Vaynerchuk and yeah. um, he's massive on uh, branding and, and um, building your own profile and okay. that's something I think as an athlete I could really uh, take on and for yeah. me it was just about putting out good content and about things that I can control yeah. a lot of the times you know you might do a an interview at footy and they can twist and turn things the way that they want to but with the vlog I feel like it's something that I can record, film and edit and put right? out yeah and yeah. put out the way that I want to portray myself and my family and uh, you know so far it's been a lot of fun I've yeah. had to learn a lot along the way yeah and how's the response been you know like Jenny I'm sure you, you said you're pretty tight with a group of mates are they honest with you are they supportive <laughs> they kind of you know oh, take my teammates give me a bit of stick every now and then but yeah, um, you know they can't talk they're they're good just for it as well so yeah. this year how, how's it looking for the Sharkies you guys had a good pre-season talk, talk us through how the start of the year's been yeah look it's uh it's probably been a bit of a different off season mm. for us we've um obviously had a change yeah a change in coach uh and at a probably very different time than what would usually occur yeah. uh but you know it's been a full credit to the club actually the way they've handled the whole thing and obviously yeah. not long just hired John Morris as our new coach and, and he's been outstanding the way he's come in and, and handled the whole the whole situation so uh, you know the playing group hasn't really been too effective we've just been focused on training and yeah. preparing ourselves as best we can for the season and you know we're excited we've got a, a bunch of new signings including uh, Sean Johnson and Josh Morris who I think will you know add extreme value to our team and you know we're excited for what lies ahead. Yeah, obviously you were part of the team that brought the premiership was it 2016? Yep 2016. Right, magic moment is this the team, and I don't have to be cool, anyone go, yeah, I'm going to win the Premiership, but real talk, you'd like to see, you know, top end of the table? I truly do believe that we've got a top four team, yep. uh, you know, with the squad that we've got at the moment. I think, you know, we've got a heap of guys with a lot of experience as well as uh, the mix with some young guys who, who will come in and play their role this year. But, you know, I would like to think we could finish in the top four because, yeah. you know, history says if you don't finish in the top four, you probably can't win the Premiership. Now, throughout last season, we had a guy just bagging tries left, right and centre in Val. 
He's gone. Now, I think we're pretty happy that Shorty Johnson, because obviously he's got a great flair in his attack. But what was the club like when Val left? Because I know there was it kind of, you know, there were two sides mm. to it. So just, just break down that moment and, you know, when you heard about it. Yeah, look, I was probably shocked as anyone, to be honest. Yeah. I, I actually play NFL fantasy with Val in a competition. You know, I know that he's obviously got love for the game of NFL, loves yeah. watching it. And uh, and a lot of people came out and were sort of bagging him uh, about what he, he, he decided to do. But yeah. uh, for me personally, you know, I'll, I couldn't bag him. Uh, you know, he's a good friend of mine and, you know, we've won a pr premiership together. So we will be bonded together for a long time. And the way I looked at it is that the, he's, the kid's 23 years old. He's absolutely done everything in the game, played mm. for Australia, you know, won competitions, uh, won Origin Series. Yeah. And if there's a time for him to go over and challenge himself now and to try and make it in another sport, it's now. And, yeah. you know, he had my full support and, you know, I hung out with him a few times before he left and okay. I, I can't wait to, to follow his journey. Unfortunately, the NRL is kind of getting this little thing about it. There's a few blokes who are slipping up. Um, how's the rest of the comp? When they see this, they just kind of like, oh. Not again. Like, is this... Yeah, yeah. look, it's it's probably been one of the, the worst off-seasons uh, to date in terms of bad behaviour for players. And, Shocker. You know, it, it's it's a bit frustrating, I think, for, you know, probably 90%, 95% of the players who, mm. you know, abide by the rules and, you know, don't get into trouble. And, you know, unfortunately, that small minority of people who do, you know, do the wrong thing, it, it tarnishes everybody and... I think everyone needs to understand that it's, you know, it is a small minority. Yeah. A lot of the majority of players are out there doing the right thing. Yeah. And a lot of them are out there, you know, giving their time and doing char things like charity work and helping out in the community that, yeah. you know, just doesn't get shown. But, uh, you know, I've got no doubt that, you know, that the game will get through it and, and the players will now, I think, that the head office is, you know, coming down with some harsher penalties. Players hopefully will, you know, Keep yeah. themselves in line. Yeah. Now, charity work. You actually do some charity. You mentioned that before. Just yeah, tell us a bit about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, a few weeks ago, I contacted uh, an organisation called One Meal Sutherland, and they provide uh, a weekly meal every Sunday in Sutherland uh, to people who, you know, uh, are a bit less fortunate or um, in need. So. Uh, yeah, I contacted them and said I'd love to come down and help out and just went down there for about an hour and a half and, and fed a few people and talked. and Feels good, right? Yeah, gave away a bit of my old training clothes and, uh, you know, I left, you know, th that afternoon just and it really did, it hit me, you know, I really felt good and I went home and I was just, I was in a really happy mood and, yeah. um, you know, I definitely plan on doing more of it this year. Yeah, great. Are there any young lads coming up in the club that you're like, oh, hang on, we got to try to keep this guy close because, God forbid, we don't want to lose him like we did you for two years. <laughs> yeah. So get you back. Yeah, look, plenty at the moment. Uh, I think, you know, we're looking to some young guys to come in and play their role and I think someone like uh, young Bronson Cherry who's, uh, I think he's 18 or 19, had an outstanding season last year and I think... Uh, he'll definitely push for some first grade time this year in the centres. So he's Junk. he's huge, mate. He's big for biggest eighteen year old I've ever seen. So yeah, <laughs> he's, good he's a good kid, though. Like the yeah. Of that. yeah, you're with Mazda, and they're kind of looking after you really well. Let's give him a shout. Tell us how good Mazda is. <laughs> actually, to be fair, I was in the Uber the other day, sitting in a Mazda, and I was just like, damn, this actually isn't that bad. Yeah. yeah. So um, when I when I moved back from New Zealand, I obviously didn't have a car in Australia, and yep. uh, I'm I'm truly grateful to. Uh, be involved with a local uh, organisation such as Sutherland Mazda yeah. who you know provide me a car and uh, at the moment I'm driving the CX-9 it's a fits the Pram in the back so uh, you know it, it's, it is great. Fits the Pram in the back how's dad <laughs> life going? Yeah it's really good my daughter's 10 months now so yeah. uh, it's I'm one of those things that's just changes your life yeah. uh, you know like that it, it's been such a, an awesome experience, yep. um, you know, from the moment my wife fell pregnant to, you know, to giving birth and just to watching her grow. And at the moment, you know, she's starting to pick up a few more milestones now. She's crawling up on the couch and, yeah. you know, nearly walking, but not quite. And, you know, I just can't wait to, you know, watch her grow up. Now, I asked uh, a few of the boys, I said, oh, I've got an interview with Chad next week. Is there anything that I should be asking him? Now, I thought I was going to get all these footy-related stuff, but they just keep talking about your haircut, yeah. mate. So run me through that. Yeah, people always ask me, like, what do I put in my hair? And I, 
I don't put anything in it. It's just very thick. But yeah, I usually go up to either Men's Republic in Cronulla, all the boys out, uh, out there, you know, look after me. Either of those three do a great job. Hey, I'm gonna wrap this up. That was a good little chat, yeah. mate. Put it there. Good luck for the season. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Fins up, mate. Fins up. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Want to keep up to date with everything Shire? Follow us on our social media and give our magazine a read to make sure you're up to date with everything that's going on.